So I'm still working on the motor for my Lance Milan, which is a Xenon Freebird. One of the unfortunate things that the previous owner did was he removed all the kickstart gear stuff, saying, oh, that'll make it faster. So, since I couldn't find this information anywhere else, I decided to show you what this looks like. I took the spring off, just so that we can move things by hand. When you stop on the kickstarter, it spins this around. The angle gear makes this pop out and jump onto the starter gear here. But if you just gently turn this around, you can see what it does. When you get to the bottom of the stroke, the starter gear catches here on the stop, and the teeth up here should be clear and away from the starter gear so that the motor can freewheel and spin. And then when you let off, the idler gear will push back and disengage. But getting the alignment's tricky. I had better luck doing it this way without the spring so that I could turn it by hand to the end of the stroke and then lining it up that way because these alignment marks really didn't work the where'd it go? right there the alignment mark here is actually right in the middle of the welded spot and I can't line that up where it's supposed to be because then the weld would be there so that has to be below the spot there is a little dot right there right there little dot punch mark and this does line up correctly here, but it's actually a little bit low. If I moved it up to where it was supposed to be, it didn't look quite right. So I think at this point all I need to do now is put the spring on, take the keeper off, and flip it around there. The other thing to know is that this is a BN157QMJ, which is the Xenon style motor. A lot of these these style scooters use this wedge-shaped wedge CVT cover. What I found out is these look like a normal CVT cover, a normal long case, 10 bolt cover, but they're fatter in the middle. Instead of having a hump on either side, they go straight across. So it's a lot deeper here. So what I found out is these motors don't use the standard 130 millimeter kick shaft. You have to get a type 2 shaft. It's actually 170 millimeters long. The idler shaft and the start gear look like they're standard, but this kickstart shaft is a lot longer. So you have to make sure you get the right one. In the first part of my video, several of the commenters were giving me grief about not showing how to put the return spring back in. So I thought I'd do all the steps just to show you how this works. When the spring goes on, turn it around, it actually locks against that small peg right there. That's the target you're looking for. You won't be able to see it because it's actually on the bottom, but that's the idea. A couple other things to know. The intermediate shaft on the back side is this little whirl pin driven in the side. That little pin needs to line up with that slot right there. So when you put it in place you'll have to rotate the shaft around until that pin drops in. The other thing you should be aware of is the shaft needs to loop be loose and it needs to spring back and forth. That's how it actually works. When you step on the kickstarter, the gear pops forward to engage the teeth. A little locator spring has to move back and forth. That actually locks in a slot in the bottom of the crankcase, so you need to make sure you get that lined up too. The index marks, the one on the left side, should line up with the crankshaft when it's in place. But you won't be able to see that when it's in place because it'll be covered up by the variator pulley. The official index mark is right here. It's that little punch mark on the side of the slider there. That's what you're supposed to use. My gear actually happens to have a little logo mark here stamped in the side. I'll probably use that because it's easier to see. 
Let's see if we can put this in place. You slide this in here. You gotta get it lined up at the bottom. Get it in the hole. Rotate this around until that shaft drops in place. And that spring is lined up in the slot down below. And we'll turn this around so that it kind of lines up straight across with that shaft. Now we're going to take this, drop this in its place. And because these gears are angled, you can kind of drop it in and twist it a little bit to get it in place. I can't line up my index mark perfectly because the quality control people put the weld right where it needs to be. So you just got to kind of put it a tooth or two below so that it still lines up with the little punch mark right here. It's about the best you can do. That's in solid, that's in solid. Take the spring. Little hook. Put that in here. Slide that in. Start low. Make sure it's hooks on that peg underneath. There you go. Get my pliers. Grab the tail. Wrap that around. And that hooks. <laughs> Right there, underneath that little stick out. Yeah. Grab the keeper, take the keeper. It's got a flat side and a little tail. We're going to put that right here. If I use the right end of the bolt, that'll go right here. This way. Snug that down. And that's that. Everybody's in place. Good, good. We'll grab the little kickstart. Stick that on the end here. Manipulate this. And this is what you're after is when you twist that. Let me hold that. And we'll go back and forth. And if I can get an angle where I can see it. Okay. Let me twist this. See that gear pops out a little bit on those angled teeth. But the problem you'll have when you go to put the lid on is that intermediate gear moves around a lot. And these shafts have to line up very precisely with the holes in the inside of the cover. So let's see what we can do getting the lid on. Alright, now we're gonna put the cover on. Usually I have better luck taking the bushing from the kickstart shaft, putting it in here first, rather than putting it on the shaft first, because that always ends up being a pain. Get it lined up. For me it's easier to put the shaft in first. Pegs. Put the kick shaft on. Kick start lever. Move that back and forth a little bit. That'll help the intermediate shaft to line up with the hole. And then 
should be in place. Just like that. One thing you don't want is when you're moving it around, if you pull it out a little bit and those gears disengage, that spring will release and everything will go out of place and you just hear the thing pop. Then you gotta pull it back off, get everything lined up again, start over. Good luck.